Hi, this is History with me, Dan. This video is about the houses on Charter Oak Place, a short but very historic street in the city of Hartford, Connecticut. Many of the city's most prominent citizens once lived here, including Abraham Lincoln's Secretary of the Navy and the inventor of the Gatling gun. I've done a lot of videos about buildings in Hartford that no longer exist. But in this video, only a few of the houses I'm going to talk about are lost buildings. That's because most of the Victorian-era houses built on Charter Oak Place still survive today. I've featured many of them over the years on my website, historicbuildingsct.com. The street is named for the famous Connecticut landmark, the Charter Oak, which once stood on the old Willis Estate. The venerable tree fell in a storm on August 21, 1856. If you want to learn more about the history of the Charter Oak, check out my video called Where Was Connecticut's Charter Oak Located, which I'll link to at the very end of this video. After the loss of the Charter Oak, a group of developers laid out a new street along Charter Oak Hill through the old Willis property. This survey map from 1860 is an early view of Charter Oak Place when there were only three houses. To head down the street from north to south, you enter Charter Oak Place from Charter Oak Avenue with a brief eastward jog that ascends past the spot where the Charter Oak had stood and then continues south along the ridge of Charter Oak Hill to the intersection with what's now Willis Street. By 1860, the old mansion of Isaac W. Stewart, who'd owned the Willis estate, had been demolished. Another early house in the vicinity, built by Julius Gilman, was still standing in 1860. Gilman had operated a book bindery in Hartford, but bad health caused him to switch to farming. In the early 1860s, he replaced his original farmhouse with a Second Empire-style mansion. This house was later demolished and is now a parking lot. As shown in this section, from the Hartford and Tolland County Atlas of 1869, by that year, there were ten houses on Charter Oak Place. Near the end of the 19th century, as shown in this section of the 1896 Atlas of Hartford, there were 18 houses. Today, 13 of those houses survive, along with four other buildings erected after 1896. By the late 20th century, many of these buildings were vacant and in dilapidated condition, but since that time they have mostly been converted into apartments, meaning that the street retains a residential character. So let's take a tour of Charter Oak Place. Between Charter Oak Avenue and the entrance to Charter Oak Place, is a sliver of land containing a monument to the Charter Oak, placed here in 1907 by the Connecticut chapter of the Society of Colonial Wars. Just south of it is the spot where the oak actually stood. In the 1860s, the prominent Hartford lawyer A.P. Hyde built a substantial Italianate-style house on this corner. A marble plaque on the property's stone wall Mark the famous tree's location. In the 1920s, the house was replaced by an apartment building designed by the architectural firm of Berenson and Moses. The plaque was relocated to the side of the new building. Incidentally, back in those days, pedestrians could mount a set of stairs just east of the Charter Oak Monument to get to Charter Oak Place. Those stairs are long gone. Up on Charter Oak Hill, across from the apartment building, are two Italianate-style double houses, the Peace House built in 1863 and the Fenn Eaton House built in 1862. They each have three stories facing the street, but because they are built into the edge of the hill, 
They actually have five stories on the back. Across the street and just south of the apartment building is a brick house with Italianate decorative brackets at 33 Charter Oak Place. It was built in the early 1860s for Nathaniel Shipman, originally from Southbury, Connecticut, where he was born in 1828. Shipman was a Yale educated lawyer who settled in Hartford, a founder of the state's Republican Party. From 1858 to 1862, he was executive secretary to William A. Buckingham, the state's governor during the Civil War. Shipman later served as a judge of the United States District Court and then the United States Circuit Court of Appeals. Before his death in 1906, he had moved to a house on Asylum Avenue, but still owned the old homestead. It was eventually sold by his heirs in 1917, and the new owner built an apartment building on the lot just south of the house. Returning to the east side of the street, just south of the two double houses, and, like them, built into the side of the hill, was the home of Samuel Taylor at 30 Charter Oak Place. This photograph shows the Taylor family sitting in their backyard below the level of Charter Oak Place and facing what was then called Governor Street. Samuel Taylor is a major name in Hartford history. His father, Edwin Taylor, started a prominent lumber company, which I mentioned recently in the first of my three videos about the history of Hartford's Dutch Point. Samuel Taylor managed the company for many years and later went into banking. He also served on the city council. Before his death in 1908, Taylor amassed a large collection of photographs he'd commissioned documenting historic Hartford buildings, many of which no longer exist. He lived on Charter Oak Place with his two unmarried daughters, Mary Curtin Taylor and Ada Louise Taylor, who continued his collecting tradition. Mary inherited the negatives of the photos and later left them to the Connecticut State Library, while Ada inherited the photographic prints, which she left to the Connecticut Historical Society. The sisters moved out of the Charter Oak Place house after their father's death. Further down the hill, right behind the house, St. Cyril and Methodius Church was built in 1914 on Governor Street, now called Popoliusko Court. The church served Hartford's Polish immigrant population, which was centered in this neighborhood. For a time, the church used the old Taylor House as a convent, but the house was eventually torn down. On the hill, behind a fence, is a lawn where the Taylor House once stood. Just south of the Taylor House was another double house, built in the later 19th century at number 25 to 28, which was also demolished. Across the street from the church's rear lawn is the Kingsbury Gatling House at 27 Charter Oak Place. Another large Italianate structure, it was built for the Kingsbury family in about 1860 and has a later Moorish-style addition at the rear. The house was later sold to Dr. Richard Gatling, who'd invented the Gatling gun. He came to Hartford in 1870 when the Colt Patent Firearms Manufacturing Company began producing the gun. Gatling left Hartford in 1897, and the house was then owned by Aaron W. C. Williams, an executive at the Capewell Horsenail Company. His nephew, George C. F. Williams, lived here for a time before building the house on Prospect Street that is now Connecticut's governor's mansion. Although the Kingsbury Gatling House was gutted in a fire in the 1970s, it was restored as apartments in the 1980s. Moving back to the east side of the street, there's another double house at 22 to 24 Charter Oak Place. It was erected circa 1870 by Joseph Schwab. He worked for a mercantile house in Germany where he was born 
and supported the German revolutionaries of 1848 before emigrating to America, where he was successful in the Hartford insurance business. For 37 years, he was on the city's high school committee, which built the now lost Hartford Public High School building on Hopkins Street. He was also the first president of the Ladies Deborah Society of Hartford, which raised funds to build the Deborah Chapel at Beth Israel Cemetery. Built in 1886, the chapel was also torn down just recently. Directly across the street from the Schwab House is the house at 23 Charter Oak Place, built circa 1862 for William L. Wright, a paint dealer. Next south, at 19 Charter Oak Place, is a much more ornamented Italianate house built in 1869 for manufacturer James Niles. It has decorative brackets and window moldings. Across the street is the house at number 20, which was built in 1870 for the screw machine manufacturer Asa S. Cook. In contrast to the dominance of the Italianate style that we've encountered so far, this house has a French Second Empire style mansard roof. Just south of the Cook house, at number 16, is a house built in 1894, a bit later than the houses we've covered so far. It has eclectic features, the roof line reflecting the Queen Anne style, the Palladian window, the Colonial Revival style, and the upper two floors, the shingle style. The house at number 14, on the right, dating to 1884, is also in the Queen Anne mode and similarly reflects the tastes of the later 19th century. Across from these two houses is a very substantial building erected as a double house for the prosperous flower merchants Charles Robinson and James Smith at 15 to 17 Charter Oak Place. Built in 1864, this house is also stylistically eclectic, with a Second Empire mansard roof and an Italianate cupola. The one-story entrance attached to the house's south wing once had an attractive sunroom above it but this was later replaced by a two-story extension. In other ways, the house's exterior, shown here in the 1860s, appears much as it did in the 19th century. Just south of the Robinson Smith house was a now lost residence that was once home to Glastonbury, Connecticut native Gideon Wells, who was Secretary of the Navy under Presidents Lincoln and Johnson. Returning to Connecticut after his service in Washington, D.C., Wells bought the house, which stood at 11 Charter Oak Place. It had been erected in 1865 by Woodbridge White. Wells remained in the house until he died in 1878, and in 1911 it was acquired by St. Peter's Catholic Church which stands just to the west on Main Street. The church had the house torn down in 1957 to make way for a new convent for the Sisters of Mercy. Across from the site of the Wells House is the Colonel Charles H. Northam House, known locally as the Painted Lady. Built in 1875, just a year after the Mark Twain House in Hartford, it shows a similar influence of the high Victorian Gothic or stick style, which was transitional between the Gothic Revival and Queen Anne styles. It features complex massing and a variety of Victorian decorative features. A wealthy merchant and banker, Colonel Northam was a partner of the flower merchants Robinson and Smith across the street. He was also a philanthropist who donated the Northam Memorial Chapel at Hartford Cedar Hill Cemetery and Northam Towers at Trinity College. The house extends a distance to the rear, and behind it is the original carriage house. As I mentioned, the Gilman House, which once stood south of the Northam House, is now lost. The last two houses on Charter Oak Place 
before it intersects with Willis Street, are on the west side. The H. E. Harrington House at 7 Charter Oak Place, pictured here, was built circa 1900. As for one Charter Oak Place, there was once a house at that location that had been built in the 1870s and that stood there until it was demolished in the 1950s. The lot remained vacant until May of 1980, when another house was moved to a position just a few feet south of the foundation of the earlier house. This new house was actually built circa 1890. It originally stood at 22 Congress Street, as shown in this photo, which reveals its dilapidated condition by the 1970s. In that decade, there was a major rehabilitation of Congress Street intended to restore its 19th century character, since it was already compromised by being hemmed in between two apartment buildings. And because its removal would facilitate the creation of parking space, the house was slated for demolition. But in 1979, the Hartford Architecture Conservancy pushed instead for its removal to Charter Oak Place, which was completed the following year. This is a section of the 1877 bird's eye view of Hartford, showing Charter Oak Place and its houses at that time. Do you remember them all? There's the Lost Hyde House and the Surviving Shipman House, the Peace and Fen Eaton Double Houses, the Lost Taylor House, the neighboring Lost Double House and the surviving Schwab and Cook Houses, the Kingsbury Gatling, Wright, Niles, and Robinson Smith Houses, which all survive, and the neighboring Wells House, which doesn't, the Northam Residence and its Carriage House, both of which survive, and the neighboring Gilman House, which is lost. And lastly, a mysterious house at one Charter Oak Place, which existed before the current house on the site, was moved there. On August 26, 1865, during the first boom of house building on the newly laid out Charter Oak Place, a writer in the Hartford Current newspaper noted, after visiting Charter Oak Hill, that, quote, a fine and well laid out avenue runs over it from Charter to Governor Street, upon which the enterprise of our citizens has erected many beautiful and splendid mansions, the view from which cannot be surpassed anywhere in Connecticut, and, we venture to say, in New England. One need but stand on the front plaza of the fine residence of Nelson Kingsbury Esquire to be convinced of this. From any of the lookouts on the top of the dwellings on the hill, the view will quite compensate any who cannot spend the time or afford to go to the White Mountains. The improvements on Charter Oak Place are still progressing. Soon every lot upon the avenue will have upon it a fine residence, owned and enjoyed by the occupants. Charter Oak Place is one of the healthiest and pleasantest avenues in the city. Our citizens, in their morning and evening rides, will be amply paid by occasionally driving over the hill and through the avenue. Unquote. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel.